Welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, and today we're going to be tasked with uncovering the identity of the great Sudoku murderer. Um, but you can see on the screen we've got this Cludoku puzzle today by Ricky Cruz, and there's a list of suspects. And if we go through this list of suspects, I know exactly who did this already. You don't have to be a genius. Um, you know, we've got the suave and sophisticated Reverend Green there, but this nefarious looking bloke, Professor Plum, Hmm, he's the one who did it. I'm telling you now, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to know this. Um, so, yeah, as I say, we're here to play Cludoku, and I am very much looking forward to it. I'll read you the rules in just a moment. They're quite interesting, I have to say. A um, couple of words first about our ARG, our alternate reality game, which has been running now for about nine days. Um, and we've been following it very closely. A number of you are trying it on the Discord server, and it's been fascinating to watch you progress through it. Well, today is the final day. Uh, so for the hundreds of you, and I think it is hundreds who are still in the hunt, you should be able to finish it tonight and see the big reveal. And yes, there is a big reveal. Um, we're going to be keeping a close eye on Discord and also on our Twitter. So if you do finish, um, do let us know. Um, and good luck. I hope you find the inspiration to get you through the final puzzles. Um, but remember, there's no substitution for hard work. Um, also, I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon page. A number of you are patrons of the channel over there. For that, we're hugely grateful. And at the moment, there's a bit of a bonus because there is early access to Fistimafel's latest Sudoku. Uh, some of you indeed have already managed to solve it and that gives me some hope I might be able to solve it for you in a live solve in the coming days um, but yeah if you are a patron of the channel do go go over there you can go over there right now and play the latest Fistimafel so that is a huge hugely um, fun thing to do now let's read the rules of this one what we've got is welcome to Sudoku Manor where normal Sudoku rules apply along thermometers digits must increase from the bulb except for the central thermo where a murder has taken place. Ah, there's a central thermo there. The central thermo breaks when the middle cell is counted, but works as normal when that cell is ignored. Okay, all right, I think I understand that. This means the broken cell may repeat a digit from elsewhere on the thermo. Okay, yeah, I can see how that's that that's possible given it's a broken thermo. Um, the murder occurred in one of the six three by three rooms containing thermos. And what does that mean? Is it? Oh no, that's oh I see. Yeah, look, Ricky Cruz has labelled the rooms. It's like it is just like Cluedo. We've got kitchen, ballroom, conservatory, lounge hall, and study. Oh, that is lovely. And each of these rooms has a thermo in it. Okay. All right, so what do we do now? The thermos are the six weapons, each of which is identified by the number in the center of its room. Right, so you can see there are some central, so the central cells in each room map to a weapon. Ah, and here are the weapons here. So the, and these are all the normal Cluedo, Cluedo weapons, of course, candlestick, dagger, lead pipe, Revolver, rope, wrench. Well, given we know Professor Plum did it, now he's a cowardly character. He's going to have used the revolver, I think, or he's going to have thrown a candlestick or dropped something on somebody from a great height. Right, so mm, there are still some choices. I, I'm, I wouldn't want to be too certain about the weapon yet. Um, now, what's it say now? The six suspects are gathered in the centre room represented by the coloured cells. Ah, so look, we've got these Cluedo characters here. These correspond... Oh, I see. So yeah, these correspond to the, the suspects. And in fact, look, I better show you the actual Sudoku here because this is going to be confusing otherwise. So this, this orangey one must be Miss Scarlet, Colonel Mustard, Mark Good... I mean, Professor Plum. Um, oh, what was the blue one? Miss Peacock? The suave and sophisticated... Reverend Green 
and that's this one must be Mrs. White, who is looking a bit grey today. Um, now, what else do we have to do? Each suspect cell contains a number corresponding to one of the weapons. Each suspect... Okay. All right, so I think I understand that. Um, this shows which room each suspect was in at the time of the murder. Okay, yeah, because we know that these cells here are identifying weapons and they're all in different rooms. Um, the number in the broken cell of the central thermo is the key to discovering the killer. The killer was in the only room where the highest digit on that room's thermo equals the broken cell. Other room's thermos are allowed to share highest digits. Can you crack, the, crack this cryptic case? Well, of course I can. I've already done it. It's Professor Plum with some instrument and it, it will be very, very unpleasant. Um, brilliant. I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying this. The, the way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video as usual. Um, I think basically this is just a bit, a bit like a thermo, isn't it? I'm going to start on that basis and see how far we get. Um, and with that, let's. I suppose there's never been a more appropriate um, way of saying let's get cracking. We are actually going to crack the case today. So where do, where do you start with thermos? I'm going to start with the big long thermo here. So I have to ignore the central cell, which is broken. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's still eight cells long, so it's it's pretty restricted, isn't it? It must be something like this. There's only two. And we know this because if we if we tried three at the base of the thermo, this square would have to be at least four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would mean this square has to be ten. And although this is a somewhat elaborate Sudoku, you can't put ten in it. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So there's only two options for each of these cells. Uh, we've only got... In fact, there is... It's quite surprising that this solves in a way because there isn't a great deal of information we've got another we've got two more sort of lengthy thermos ish but nothing as long as this one this one is only six cells so there's loads of options for this one um, but let's put them in anyway and see if it tells us anything useful and of course it doesn't let's look at this one one two three four five six seven this one is okay this one's slightly better oh i nearly did that quickly um uh, it's a little trick you can do with this thermo can this square be an eight well the answer is no because if it is you'd have to put a nine above it and now this square has no possible value so this square is not eight now that that immediately therefore rules out the highest option from each cell as we go down the thermo again. So we do get a little bit of restriction on the thermo in box three. Now, yeah, oh yeah, we get a useful, useful look here. These three cells have got to be selected from the digits four, five, six, and seven. And this square is also a four, five, six, or seven. So this is a quadruple on those digits. And that means this little cell here can't be four, five, or six. That must be three. We get a digit in the grid. Not, and it didn't take that long for once. Finish off the bottom of this thermo. And we get stuck. What do we do now? Um, so in this, in this row, we still need two, eight, and... Ah, okay, yeah, I know what we do now. Two, eight, nine... But this is on the base of a thermo. So what can this digit be? Well, you can never put 9 on the bottom of the thermo because you can't put 10 on a thermo. But in this instance, there's no way you could put 8 here either. Because if you did, you'd have to put 9 there. But we know that this is a 289 triple. So that doesn't work. This must be 2. And we're honing in on identifying Professor Plum as the murderer. Uh, 2 here. Look, that gives us a 3. Oh, huge. That gives us a 3 on the huge thermometer. So now, yeah, look, we're gonna get all of this. Well, virtually all of it, we don't get that one. But we get a lot of progress all of a sudden. Six is ruled out of those cells. So six has got to be at the top of box two. Nine can't go there anymore. Eight has to be on the right-hand side of this of box three because it can't go here 
think, well, it can't go in any of those six cells now. Eight must be on the left side of box nine. Ah, and where, where does nine go in box three? This nine here forces it into this cell because it can't be on the thermo. So now nine also sits at the top of box two. And on the left side of box nine. And we've actually made some progress, which is good. And we've got a nine in, in one of these cells. What does that mean? Each suspect cell contains a number corresponding to one of the weapons. Ah. Ah, yeah, okay. Okay, this is interesting. So these digits here exactly map onto these digits, the colored digits in the central box. So we know this square can't be a nine then because it's in one of these cages. In fact, maybe we should look at the central row. We've got one, two, and nine to place. And this can't be, ah, yeah, look, this can't be a nine because there's a nine in this box. And we know nine must be in one of the colored cells. This can't be a nine by Sudoku, which means this is a nine. Ah, nine, eight. We can't, yeah, this is great. Look, nine's here and here. You can't put nine in the bulb of a thermo. You can't repeat nine in a cage because that would imply two of these colors had to be nine and repeat nine in box five. So nine must go at the top of the thermo, which is the least helpful place for it to go, but at least it's another digit in the grid. This, hang on, there was some, Hang on, didn't this have to be the highest digit on something? And it can be a one or a two. <laughs> Let me just read the rules again. I, you should be able to see the rules on your screen, but I have them on the left-hand side in my Word document. So it says, um, the number in the broken cell of the central thermo is the key to discovering the killer. The killer is in the only room where the highest digit on that room's thermo equals the broken cell. Well, this can't be a one then because that would imply the highest digit on a thermo was a one and these are all two, two or higher. So this must be two. And in fact, this must belong to a two cell thermometer because that's the only way it could be the highest digit on the thermometer. And this one can't be, have a highest digit of a two because the two's in the bulb. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. So it's one of these two and it can't be this one because you can't put one, two into this thermometer because that, that clashes the two in column five. This is very clever. So this has to be a one, this has to be a two, this is the room. Was this the study? Oh, I, I'm gonna to have to go back to the picture to tell that. I, I, I want to see where Mark committed the murder. Yes, in the study. Um, so the study is the, is the murder room. So that means that Professor Plum must end up in here. Does that mean those two digits are the same digit? I mean, I'm not going to use that to logically solve the puzzle, but we all know he's the culprit. Um, look, one, one, we're going to get a one here. Where does two go in this box? We get the two. We can't put one higher up on the thermometer, so one must be in one of those squares. Uh, Nine must be in one of those three positions by Sudoku. Six must be in one of these three positions by Sudoku. Two must be in one of those positions. I'm not sure if this is the best way of doing this, but this is a way of doing it. So if we look at I tell you what we should do now, you know, we should look at the colored cells because we know what values they have. They are every value other than two, five, and six. So these cells are one, three, four, seven, eight, nine. Now normally I'd never bother to notate this, but that means that these cells round the grid are also one, three, four, seven, eight, nine. Now this, this one's already determined. So the others can't be nine. 
So these have to be selected from one, three, four, seven, eight. Now, can we eliminate? That can't be one or three. That can't be eight. Actually, all three, look. And definitely it can't be six, which is pencil marked in its box at the moment. This one can't be three. This one can't be three. Oh, which one's three? Ah, yeah, look. These threes are both are all pointing at those four cells. So there's only one of these that can be three. So now we know, well, we don't know, but I'm very, I'm very suspicious. I think this one is going to be a three. If that's not a three, this puzzle is broken. I'm telling you that, Ricky Cruz. You've not done it properly. Um, now we can rule out nine from all of those because this is the murder room, isn't it? Because this has the broken, well, it has the two in it on its thermometer. Uh, so we can't put one into either of those squares. How do we do this? Am I meant to be looking at... What am I meant to be doing to finish this off? Is it this thermometer? Oh yes, look it is, it's this thermometer. Why do I say that? Well look, the bowl bend is restricted. It sees one, two and three. Ah, so this square, well, it's got to be four or five. If you try six here, seven, eight, nine would break. So this is much more restricted than I first realized. Seven, eight. Yeah, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Look at the box now. Th this being restricted has forced two and three into the left side of this box. Now three doesn't matter too much, but two most certainly does because it sees this square. So this square has to be a one. And now where do you put one back in this box? It sort of bounces back in. It has to go there, which means we must remove one from the others. Those are all not one now. One yeah, one is fixed in box one. It has to go there, which means six is fixed on the thermometer. So six in box seven is now definitely on that side of things. So six is in one of those two squares. This is really good, isn't it? So uh, now look, if we look along this row carefully, you can see there's a four, seven, eight triple. So this square must be a five and this square must be a three. And the five is on the thermometer and forces this to be a four. And that forces that to be a five, six, seven, eight, which means that must be a four. Perfect. This can't be a four anymore. And it can't be an eight. So this is a seven. That means that's a four. This is an eight. We've got a seven, eight pair in this um, column, which means we can do some eliminations. Look, and get rid of three as well from those two. And is that? Do we hit a bit of a hiatus now? I hope not, because we've done. Oh no, we don't. Four here. That's got to be a five. And once that's a five, this all gets resolved. This becomes a 6-8 pair into those two squares by Sudoku. Where does 7 go in this box? Look, it's got to go here. 7 therefore can't go there or there. These two squares have got to be 2 and 5. That should allow us to write a 3 into the top of the grid, I think. These squares... This is a 6-8-9 triple, isn't it? So we can do a little bit with that. We can do that and that. That means those two squares have got to be five and seven, which we can do because there's a five down there. These have to be two, three and four in some order. And that's not three and that's not two. And I'm saying and because I've got nothing better to say. I don't know what to do. Ah, oh, yeah, I do. Look, we've got eights pointing at that square. So that's got to be an eight. That means that's a nine using our pencil marks. 
So nine must go nine must go in one of these three squares, but can't be on the bulb end of the thermometer. So we can limit nine slightly. There must be a seven in one of those squares by Sudoku and a four. Look, we've got a four seven pair. So in fact, let's put that in because that means those two squares must be five and six. The four seven means we remove the four from this square. The five six means we get a three in this square, which removes the three from lots of these central squares. This seven is, oh, why didn't I just see that when I was looking at it? I have no idea. Such are the whims of my eyesight. Um, so these must be four and five, and these must be two and six. And this must be very close to cracking, surely. I'm not quite sure. How do I fix this, this stuff in the middle? Maybe I can do it using... I've got to put a seven look. Where does seven go in this box at the bottom? It's got to be in one of those two squares, I think. Three, four, seven, and nine. Four, five, six. Ah, maybe this square is this. This is close to being a naked single, I think. If we look along the row, we need two, four, five, and six. And look, it's four, five, six in the column. It is a naked single. That's a two, which means that's a four, three, two. Now, maybe that's the key to finishing this off. We can get threes into these two squares. We now know we need four. Wow, we've now got a four nine pair here, which, ah, oh, this is brilliant, look. We've got a four nine pair in these two squares, which shifts the seven into the bulb of the thermometer. So now that disambiguates this square as well, because it must be higher than seven, so it's got to be nine. The nine removes a nine from that one and gives us a six at the top. So this is a one four pair now. And that means this square we should be able to write in as a five, which is helpful. That gives us a five, six, six. We need one, three into those two. And, ah, why doesn't this now fall over? Is it, it should do. So what do I now do in order to determine? Surely I don't have to just assume that Mark did it. There must actually be logic. Yeah, it's this one. Look, that, that one gives us a one, four. Four, five, five, two, two, six, six, eight. So we remove the eights from these squares. We remove the fours from these squares as well. We can remove the one from this one and this one. The seven now disambiguates the entire grid look. And that is how to solve the puzzle. But who is the murderer? Yes, yes, it's this one. It's Professor Plum, a.k.a. Mark Goodliffe. And, yeah, what, which weapon did he use? How do we know that? Um, I've got to go back to the instructions. So the murder, which is identified by the number in the centre of its room. So let me colour these in just so that we can see where they all were at the time of the murder. So that one is there. 9 was grey, 7 was blue, 4 was... So I was in this room, and which room was that? That was the... I was in the kitchen. Yeah, I was well away from the action that occurred down here. And... Oh, I see, the weapons are listed in ascending order of weapon numbers. Ascending order of weapon numbers. Oh, so we've got to go... I don't quite know which weapon did it then. We've got to go back again. And the weapon numbers are 1, 3, 4. So Mark, Mark's number was the second highest. Or second lowest, I should say. So let's go back again to the, um, the diagram. And we can say... Yeah, listed in ascending order of weapon numbers. So it was the dagger. He probably threw it, almost certainly. Almost certainly. He wouldn't want to get too close. Um, yeah, so 
That was a very unusual Sudoku in that I knew the answer to the Sudoku before I started, but such is the way sometimes. And Ricky Cruz, what a debut puzzle that is. I think it's your debut on the channel. And I absolutely loved it. So original and a mashup between Cluedo and Sudoku. You don't get better than that. Uh, and do check out Mark's video later, of course, um, where you know, you'll be able to write some comments about his activities recently. Thanks for watching. Back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.